Welcome to Grade 4 Go Math. This is Grade 4 Go Math Unit 2, Multiply by One Digit, Lesson 2.5, Multiply Using the Distributive Property. Let's begin Lesson 2.5, Multiply Using the Distributive Property. How can you use the distributive property to multiply a two-digit number by a one-digit number? Investigate. Well, the materials you're going to need are colored pencils and grid paper. It says you can use the distributive property to break apart numbers to make them easier to multiply. The distributive property states that multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying each add end by the number and then adding the products. So outline a rectangle on a grid to model 6 times 13. And this is what I did. I went 6 down and 13 across and I made myself one big rectangle. Now think of 13 as 5 plus 8. 5 plus 8. Break apart the model to show 6 times 5 plus 8. Label and shade the smaller rectangles. Use two different colors. So what I did was I went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 across and I made a rectangle inside the bigger rectangle and that left me eight left over one two three four five six seven eight to make a second rect rectangle then I shaded them two different colors five plus eight is thirteen and we're looking to find the product of six times thirteen so now what I can do is I can say six times five is thirty six times five is thirty six times eight is forty eight six times eight is 48. 30 plus 48 is 78. That is how you use the distributive property to um, multiply. Now, it says model 6 times 13, but this time we're going to use two different numbers um, to add to 13, and I'm going to use 9 and 4. So I went um, 6 times 9 is 54. 6 times 4 is 24, and 54 plus 24 is 78. All right, it says, explain how you found the total number of squares in each model in step B and C. Well, I divided the first model into a 6 by 5 rectangle and a 6 by 8 rectangle and added 30 plus 48 to get 78. All right. Now, compare the sums of the product in step B and step C with those with your classmates. What can you conclude? Well, they're the same. This shows that you can get the same answer no matter how you break apart the rectangle to get 13, you're still going to get the same answer. 3. To find 7 times 23, is it easier to break apart the factors 23 as 20 plus 3 or 15 plus 8 and explain? Well, it's easier to do 20 plus 3 because I can use mental math to multiply by multiples of 10. All right. It's easier to say 20 plus 3 than 15 times 8 because of this 20 being a 10. It's easier to multiply by those tens. All right. Let's look at making connections. It says, another way to model the problem is to use base 10 blocks to show tens and ones. Step one, use base 10 blocks to model six times 13. Well, I would have six um, groups of 13, one, two, three, four, five, six and I would break it into a rod of 10 and three ones. So six rows of one, 10 and three ones. Step two, 
break the model into tens and ones. So six tens, I broke it into six tens. Six times 10 is 60. Three ones, six rows of three ones, six times three is um, um, 18. So now six times 10 plus six times three equals 60 plus 18. The answer is 78. Now, boys and girls, they show you how to do this, but to be honest with you, you're not going to use the base 10 blocks to um, answer your questions. You're going to do it um, the way that we I showed you on the other um, slide. So it says, so six times 13 is 78. Um, it says, why is this a good model for problems? Well, in step two, the model is broken into two parts. Each part shows a partial product. The partial products are 60 and 18. Okay, so now it is your turn to show me um, if you understand what we've done on the last two slides, okay? So you're going to do um, this page on your own, and then we're going to you're going to come back and we're going to check it. Remember, this was done on slide one, this was done on slide two. So if you don't remember or don't understand how to do something, go back into the slides and figure it out for me okay now um, this says use grid paper or base 10 blocks to model the product then record your answer um, I'm just going to give you the answers to those and um, you're going to have to have your parents check to see if you did it this way or if you have base 10 blocks this way correctly all right so pause the video and um, go ahead and do this page all right, let's see how you did. It says model the product on grid um, on the grid to, and record um, the product. So thir three times 13 would be three down, 13 across, broken up into 10 and three. Um, and what is, I did not put the answer in there. Um, the answer is 39. I'm sorry, boys and girls. Um, let me do that right now. The answer is 39. Okay. All right, let's look at number two. Um, the answer is 70. So let me get the answer in there really quick. Sorry, I messed that up. So let's look at this, how they did it. Um, 5 times 14, 5 down, 14 across, broken up in 10 and 4, and your answer is 70. Now, if you didn't get 39 or 70, you need to go back and figure out what you did. Remember, it would be 5 times um, um, 10 and then 5 times 4, 5 times 10 is 50, 5 times 4 is 20, 50, and 20 is 70. So um, if you did not get these answers, go back and see what you did wrong. All right, so 6 times 14 is 84, 5 times 18 is 80, 4 times 16 is 64. Um, the answer to 6 is 84. 7 is 80, and 8 is 117. Now, if you did not get these correct, don't go any further in the lesson. Stop. Go back to the first slide. Watch the first slide again, the beginning of the video again, or contact me, and I'll give you some help. All right, 9. It says... Explain how modeling partial products can be used to find the products of greater numbers. Well, using base 10 blocks, you can skip count by tens or multiple or multiply by multiples of 10 to find the number of tens and multiply basic facts to find the numbers of ones. Then you just add the ones and the tens to find the product. And all that is an, is an expl explanation of how we got these these answers okay it says use the distributive property to model the product on the grid and record the product so 
4 times 14, 4. 10 plus 4 is 14. Do you see how we did that? 4 times 14 is 56. If you did not get 56, don't go any further in the lesson. Go back to the first slide and review it. All right, boys and girls, let's look at this page. We're going to do it together. 11. Kyle went to a fruit market. The market sells a wide variety of fruits and vegetables. The picture at the right shows a display of fruit of oranges. Write a problem that can be solved using the picture. Now, this is a possible answer. I could say one display can hold eight rows of 12 oranges. So there's eight rows of oranges and 12 in each row. If two rows in the display are empty, these two rows are empty, how many oranges are in the display? Well, first I need to find out how many oranges there are in all. I, I would go eight times 12, eight down, 12 across. Eight times 10 is 80. 8 times 2 is 16, so 96. This can hold 96 in all. So, how many are missing? Well, 2 times 12 is 24. So, I would say 96 minus 24 equals 72. Or, I could say 8 rows minus 2 rows equals 6 rows. 6 rows of 12 oranges equals 72. All right. Describe how you can change the problem by changing the number of rows of oranges and the number of, of empty spaces, then solve the problem. Well, one display can hold nine rows of 12 oranges. If five rows in this display are empty, how many oranges are, in, are shown in the display? Nine rows minus five rows equals four rows. Four rows times 12 equals 48. And of course, the 4 times 12, you would want to do like this is the distributive property. All right, it is your turn to do you the practice and the homework. You have page 91 and 92 to do independently. If you are in my class, make sure you take a snapshot of your work, send it to me so I can get it graded and into the grade book. All right, and this is a look at page 92. Um, boys and girls, make sure you're using the distributive property and writing everything out. And that is the end of this lesson. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel at Awesome Possum Classroom 451. If you would like these worksheets, email me at awesomepossumclassroom at gmail.com and I will send you the link. Have a great day.